Lexi. I'm so happy that you are here. Today I'm going to be showing you guys how I use PowerPoint to create a little something. Now I'm wearing this, I actually just got back from the grocery store, so this is what we are getting on this fine Sunday. But anyways, I was grocery shopping and I was thinking, I was like, okay Lex, you start your next class on Tuesday and I'm in my specialist and you need to get your stuff ready. Now, what I mean by that is for all of my classes, I like to have my own binder and I actually will keep this binder and refer to it when I need to, but let me cover up my professor's name. But this is kind of what it looks like and I just create my own little thing just to help me, I don't know, just be successful, I guess. I don't know, I'm more of a, I'm, I like to organize all of my things. But I create this little piece on PowerPoint and a lot of people always ask me, how do I use PowerPoint? How do I make all of my stuff? And a lot of people don't realize that you can do a lot on PowerPoint and you actually can. So I'm going to be screen recording my computer and I'm going to be showing you the process of how I create something like this. I already have my new binders that I'm going to be using. So if you're interested, continue watching. Okay friends, this is my first time using the microphone on my uh, software, so let's just hope that it works. Not really sure, but let's roll. All right, so you wanna go to PowerPoint, blank presentation, always. This is what I use for everything. Okay, so considering that I'm putting this in a binder, it's going to be going vertically and not horizontally. So I'm gonna go to design, page setup, and to make it vertical, my width is going to be eight and a half, and my height is going to be 11, just to fill in the whole sheet of paper. Now, if I did want it to go horizontally, I would make my width 11 and my height eight and a half, but let's go with vertical this time. So press okay, scale up. Now it's gonna change it. I'm gonna delete all that in the middle because I do not need it. Okay, I'm gonna double click and I'm going to go ahead and type in my class name. And this is going to help me go ahead and have that set in so then I can change my font depending on what exactly I want. I'm very indecisive. I can never decide what font I want, so I, I will play with this for at least five minutes, okay? So scrolling down, these are my first sets of fonts. They are the Amy Grosbeck fonts. Absolutely love her and her just style in general. So if you continue going, I also have the Kara Carol fonts. Those are awesome. And I also have the Hello fonts. And I do get a lot of these from defont.com. And that's where you can get a lot of free ones, um, including these, the KG fonts. They are awesome. I, I truly like those and they're free. Again, defont.com. Now, what I'm pointing to are the PB fonts. Those are the Perfect Blend fonts by Amanda Newsom. I'm gonna be honest, if I go to any font, it's normally hers because she does have such a wide variety of cursive fonts, I call them Q fonts, holiday fonts, graphics, just everything that you could want. So what I'm doing right now is I'm looking for a thicker font because I know that this is gonna be the first piece on my paper and I want it to be larger than everything else. Um, just a second ago, I scaled it up. I made it larger just so I can play with it and it gives me a better chance to look at the font up close. So now again, there I go, scrolling through every single thing that I have to try to find the right font. Now I, I honestly will go back and forth with this because that's just how I am. So what I'm looking at now is I'm going back to the Amy Grosbeck fonts and that is the hashtag nope. This is always something I, I love to use because it is a thicker font. So there I go, I scaled it up to 125 and I'm moving it into the middle. You can see that um, dotted red line that went straight down. That is how I know that it's in the middle. So what I'm gonna do is I just hovered over one letter and what I'm pointing at are different colors. Now. I use those colors quite frequently, that's why I keep them there, but what I will do is I will go to Pinterest or Google and type in like pastel color schemes and I will actually copy and save those over my PowerPoint and save those under my colors because I use them so much. Now what I'm doing is I'm going to each one and changing the colors of them and sometimes I will make them all the same color, I will change each color, I don't know, it honestly just depends on how I'm feeling in that moment. But here it seems that I am changing every single color. And this normally takes me just a second. And again, I was just pointing out the little dropper that you can use to access any color based off of a photo that you might like or, or whatnot. Okay, so after I choose my very last color, I press okay. Now, with a Mac, I will go over it and I'll press Command C, which is the copy button. But essentially all I did right here was copy and paste, but I'm going to right click and go to format shape. 
here you're gonna to wanna to go to text options. And for this, I wanna make my text field a no fill. And then I'm gonna to wanna to go to my text outline and make it a solid outline. I'm gonna to go to black. Now I do try to scale it down because I want this outline to be a thinner outline. I don't want it to be thick and just to overscale the piece that's behind it. So I make it straight on top of it and I click my arrow a few times just to kind of get that idea that it's 3D. I don't know, I use this a lot. I actually have a lot of stuff in my classroom that has this little effect. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to type the name of my actual class and for this, I don't want it to be a thick font like the one above. So I'm typing in my class and I'm going to go up to my font and I'm going to choose a thinner, more simple font that I can use for the remaining texts. So let's see. Uh, it looks like I'm going to Carol Carol and the copy concealer. Nope, not feeling it. Okay, let's see what I go to this time. Honestly, oh, let's talk about it. That's, yep. This is what I'm talking about right now. All right, so I'm changing the font just to see the size of where I kind of want it to go underneath. And I don't know if you saw that horizontal line or vertical line. Again, that's what tells me that it, if it's in the middle or if it is not. Okay, now I just copy and pasted this again just so I can type in the days in which I attend this class for me to easily keep up with. And in this case, it was March 3rd through April 28th. So that is what I am typing. Now, I don't want this to be the same size as the school resource utilization. So I'm going to scale it down. Then I'm gonna look and there's that line. So I know it's centered. Okay, I'm gonna copy and paste it one last time. And this is where I'm gonna put my professor's name. I just type in his name. And again, I don't know, let's see, what am I gonna do? I scale it down. Normally, if I see that piece, it tells me the width between both of them to see if they're even or not. Doesn't look like I scaled it down, so I'm gonna keep it around the same piece. Let's see. All right, that looks good about right there. So now, sometimes I will decide, well, in this case, I'm scaling it, I'm moving it down because I see that it's not centered, so that's that. Now, with my border, I will sometimes go to the insert piece and I will go to shapes and I will take a square and I will design it and I will press the no feel and I will do my solid line black and I'll scale it to the width of which I want it to be. But guys, normally my look, I can never make it even. It always does not look good. So I'm about to show you a trick that I use whenever I do want a border. So let's watch. All right, so I'm gonna go to print and if you look right there, it says frame slides. If you click that, guys, it automatically gives you a really thin hairline border that looks good on absolutely everything. And that's what I continue to use for most of my stuff if I do know that I'm using a border. And I just press print. Okay, guys, so what you just saw previously from the screen recording was me creating my binder cover, and this is what we created. It looks very similar to this one. However, I did use different fonts, but it does truly help me to separate and keep up with all my different classes considered, considering they are named some weird things that I can't remember. But I think it looks good. It serves its purpose, and this is honestly just a thin binder, and I like to have the pieces where you can insert stuff on the front. But again, you can use this for any of the stuff in your classroom. I know I like to keep up with binders for each of my units, and I make these for almost every single thing. I actually have, <laughs> I actually use these in my pantry. I have stuff on each of my little bins that I keep certain foods in. I don't know. So that was just a little bit about how to use PowerPoint. I plan on doing another video probably during the summer on how I create things, especially for the upcoming school year. So be on the lookout for that. Anyways, I hope this video helped you and I hope it gave you a little bit of insight on how I use PowerPoint. If you do any of this, please let me know in the comments below. Tag me in something so I can see it. And if this video helped you, give it a thumbs up. And don't forget to like, give me a comment, and subscribe to the bell notification so you don't miss any future videos.